So, the new special operation for Ghost Recon launched today. And before we start with the PvE mode, or rather while we start with the PvE mode, I thought it might be prudent to have a bit of a discussion about Ghost Recon as a game. Now, my opinion about Ghost Recon Wildlands have always been that it's a diamond in the rough. And to be honest, it's a bit of a diamond that is currently being left by the wayside in the dust. The reason I state this is because uh, Ghost Recon is sadly very good at trying, but not too much. They include a few things that are actually pretty decent, but then they fuck it up somehow. So, we are going to move straight into the Ghost Recon new game mode here. Is Karen mad at me? Why the hell did she send pendejos like you when los cabrones are at the gates? We'll see what you can do. So, if you live, I can maybe get you some gear to make your life a little easier. As you can see, we have right now 1,000 currency uh, called scraps. Now, here is the store, so we can't really buy the, all that much with it. And the, part of the thing here is that you simply buy stuff. And here we can change our loadout, but we don't have anything to change it to. We start with the Super Shoddy and the P45. And uh, it does seem like it's paused while we are checking out the loadouts either, so... Looks like the cartel is sending more men. I'm sure you'll be fine, but I'm gonna lock up, just in case. So, my main problem with this game mode, and I do have a problem before I, <laughs> before I even played it, is that it's basically just a horde mode. Meaning, the entire, uh, entire experience is tailored towards just endless battle. And that's not... I mean, it could be fun at times. But... In my experience, it shows a surprise... A surprising lack of understanding what makes Ghost Recon Violence a good game. And part of what makes Ghost Recon Violence a good game is not endless bad. I mean, if I want to talk all about the flaws of Ghost Recon, then fine, this makes a pretty neat backdrop for it. I mean, it's... I could say it's probably decent to watch, but that's probably kidding. Uh, I don't know, even know if anyone is watching this, and to be honest, I wouldn't blame anyone who just walked into this and thought, no, I don't actually want to watch this. And that is because right now this game mode is one thing, and that is gunplay. It's interesting gunplay since you have restricted weapons and stuff like this. Okay, so let's go to the store. We have a bit. Let me know if you need something with a bit of fire. Okay, so we can get the Type 95, we can get the... Oh, we can actually get the F FNFAL. I didn't, I didn't even know it was in... Uh, included yet. So we're gonna get the FNFAL. Uh, we can't actually get anything for it, but... Just trying out the FNFAL is actually worth it for me now, so... Uh, you'll have to excuse me for going straight into photo mode with this one. Because... And... I mean, it looks good, but... Can we talk a bit how the... FNFAL actually handles? I have seen pros shoot the FNFAL. I mean, real pros. Uh, shoot the FNFAL. And the way my ghosts are handling the recoil in fully automatic is unbelievable. 
because let me just tell you this. The FNFAL has what amounts to an absolutely terrible recoil. It's basically a 7.62 rifle that wasn't designed around that cartridge at all. So, sorry, I didn't expect the gun to be in the games already, so we're just reloading. And now we need to defend uh, this place. We're gonna pick up some more ammo. Now, the FNFAL is infamous for its recoil, so much that when the Brits adopted it as the self-loading rifle, they actually removed the troops' ability to fire it in fully automatic. And there were a number of... Uh, there were a number of modific modifications that... Okay, so... Apparently we can't get too far away from that area. And there were a number of modifications that used to be done to the SA. Shut the absolute... I mean, god damn it. At any rate, the FNFA, FNFAL's uh, recoil here is... ...is underrepresented as hell. And, of course, we're getting hit. I mean, our, I don't know really what our AI teammates were doing, but in this game mode, it doesn't really look like they... It doesn't look at all like they have been programmed for a situation like this. Thanks. And I can't really blame them. I mean... This is not the kind of fight where... They excelled. Uh, the... Rather, uh, the... Um, AI teammates of this game excel in situations where you strike the enemy hard and then leave. And they That's what they're good at. Alright, so let's go and see if we can get a sight for this thing. I mean, why does she keep Talking. I don't have that much interest in her keeping talking. Okay, so ACOG for X scope. We'll get one of those. Thank you. And uh, then we'll go to the equipment locker. And on the FN FNFAL. At least it's made so we can only carry one. Oh, they actually have an extended mag for the FNFAL as well. Uh, doesn't seem like we can equip... A grenade launcher, though. Uh, which is kind of sad. The FNFAL is definitely one of those weapons that would deserve a grenade launcher. Okay, so we are heading off to the next area. At any rate, when they announced the new PvE game mode, I have to admit, I was not. Ho I was hoping it wouldn't be anything like this. Because, in my world, a mode like this is lazy. And the reason I, the reason I call it lazy is because it takes assets they already have and just repurposes them. Uh, they don't have to program that much new AI for it. They basically just have to... Set up the interface and stuff like that. And th the most annoying thing is that due to the time limit about uh, defending specific areas, you are also limited in how you engage. I mean, w this is this isn't really fun. Uh, basically, all this all this game mode is right now is me standing at basically the same points 
shooting at the same enemies. And considering one of the suggestions I read regarding a new game mode, where you would basically get a new objective each and every time, and basically just you spawn in a province. Oh, he just he he just disappeared. That guy just literally disappeared. Uh, I read a suggestion where you would spawn into a random province. You would uh, do free random missions and then you would kill a random boss and that is an idea i really like so let's get a vertical full grip actually let's just get a laser side as well what since we have the ability to get one i have to say the fnfal kind of salvages salvages it a bit for me since uh I really like the FNFAL as a gun. Okay, so we are gonna stand up here now, uh, or rather we are gonna go down and grab more ammunition because we seriously need more ammunition. Uh, so, so far I am, I am pleased with the FN, FNFAL. I do enjoy that weapon. So we are going to have a bit of a more, a few more photo, show, photo shots with it, uh, or photo mode shots with it. There we go. Sorry about that. And yeah. So, yeah, we are good to go. Yeah, I know photo mode is enabled, but I'll just disable it. So let's have a look and see where the enemy will be coming from next. Looks like we've riled them up. Uh, we could have chosen the other site, uh, the tower. I really wish. I mean, I played this mode for what, ten minutes? I'm already sick of that voice. There's at least one inside the perimeter. Get them before it's too late. Why do you keep letting them get in here? Stop them. Stop them. Opening fire. God, she is annoying. I mean, how annoying can you get? Keep moving. A copy. Also, lots of enemies inbound. Okay, I think there's a vehicle inbound. Tangles are marked. Standing by. Drone is airborne. Yeah, we got more incoming. I mean, at least they have accurately or rather sufficiently uh, modeled the stopping power of the FAL. I really enjoy this, how they modeled the stopping power of the FAL. And uh, I think they made that one good. Oh, come on! What is it with that obvious, obvious disappearance? So we're gonna fill up a bit on ammunition. We're gonna see if working hard or hardly working. Shut no the more. hell up. I've got some stuff Cabrones like you could Okay, feel. stamina, hip fire, stable aim, using a cyberscope, last chance. Um We don't really have a sniper scope, so and uh, right now we are only rank zero, so we can We're grabbing a bunch of flashbacks. I mean, I don't really mind the store mechanic or the limited weapons mechanic. Uh, in fact, I kind of like that. 
but I feel they are so misplaced in this game mode. I mean, it's just disappointing to see that this is all they could come up with. Because it's not really like Operation Chimera in, uh, in Rainbow Take Six. Oh, wait, we need to get up there. We are so gonna lose because there's no way we're actually gonna get. We're running out of time. Get that yeah, you got. <coughs> you gave me about four seconds. To actually respond to that. Yeah, I wasn't. Okay, this is just pisses me off. If you ever try this again, do me a favor. Be good at it. Do you? I mean. I guess what they were coming from with this entire thing. But, like I said, what Ghost Recon does good is these lightning raids on enemy outposts where you jump in, take out the target, and then get out. You, Ghost Recon is, actually, let's just try, let's try public matchmaking. Uh, that's story, so... Cancel public matchmaking. Uh, let's actually see so that we are... I mean, if the game... No, the game crashed. After all this time, they have still not fixed that the game crashes when you go to the main menu. Holy mother of... How could they not have fixed that? It's an absolute old problem at this point. I mean, why? Why haven't this been fixed already? Uh, sorry guys, I need to basically just reboot the entire game, and that's going to take a while, even on an SSD, so. I'm just going to breathe a little bit here, and basically thank my lucky stars that tomorrow I'm going to play... Uh, Hearts of Iron 4 Manly Guns. Because, to be honest, this game mode is not going to... Um, come off it. What the hell is wrong now? Uh, you play doesn't really want to relaunch Ghost Recon Wildlands. Because, of course, the game is still active in uh, the background. Or not really background in per se, but background per... Yeah. This game mode. I... <laughs> uh, what the actual... Where's the music channel? There it is. Uh, so guys, Ghost Recon is not booting up. Um, I'm just gonna play this too, too. Now, now it's booting up.
Well, at least I have cheese noodles. <coughs> Sorry about that. Holy shit. Last week, a crude explosive detonated. Sorry, uh, I was just in on the CNN website, and Cohen is basically saying Trump is a con man and a cheat. Let's see what Fox News has to say about it. Better get the both. Fox News says. Um, President Trump never told me to lie to Congress, but wanted me to. So, a bit of a different angle there, but basically, he, even they admit that he would be a bit ashamed by it. So, uh, at any rate, let's continue with another try in the guerrilla mode. <clears throat> so, you guys can at least. See that, so here we go. So this time I won't pick the FNFAL, even though I want to. And please stand by as I have a cheese doodle. I'm just gonna send a bit of a Ugh, come on game. Uh, you're on an SSD. You can you can load better than this, right? Yeah. So we are standing by to getting into this. Or not. My apologies. Um, yeah, sorry about this. Uh, squad privacy. Oh. Um, for a moment there, it looked like I was actually going to try this in multiplayer. But, um, alas, that does not seem to be the case. Um, not... <sighs> So hopefully we will have loaded into game mode again soon enough. And hopefully also have done a little bit better with it. I mean, I run the game on an SSD. So I'm actually kind of surprised as to why it's so slow because last time around it was not this slow it was not this slow by a long shot Come on. Alright, so we are back in the game. Let's talk. Yeah, we can still get the FNFAL. We can also get the PP. A few other rifles. Uh, so it's a wee bit different, but... Oh, 
Okay, so basically none of my AI customization options have been saved. Great. So let's go and... Uh, never mind, let's just not do that. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit intrigued as to the fact that the places we defend are not even random. I mean, they could have made it random locations. But no, basically, guerrilla mode is still... Well, I mean, isn't a guerrilla somebody who does hit and run attacks against a superior foe? I mean, stuff like that. Not standing and basically shooting enemies to attack. I mean, they could just have called it basic base security infantry mode because that is more true to what it is. There we go. Tango down. Keep moving. And... Like I said, I don't really find much fun in this. Now, of course I am. I still have, like, ghost mode and the main campaign and stuff like that. So, it's not... Why do you keep letting them get in here? Stop them! Stop them! Let's see if I can do this better. At any rate, this is... For me, this is the parts of Ghost Recon Wildlands I don't like. Because... To me, if you get in a battle like this, something has gone wrong. I mean, you should never get into a battle like this unless something has gone horribly, horribly Service wrong. Location for intel. Clear. So, like I said, I'm a wee bit disappointed with the PvE mode. I mean, if you want to keep us safe, you can get us things with more firepower immediately. I mean, wouldn't that... Let me know if you need something with a bit of firepower. I just got something with a wee bit of firepower. Let's grab some ammunition for that. The Type 90, 95 it should be. So this time we defend this place, and I mean... I have spent about 30 minutes with this game mode, not counting the game crashing and being very hesitant about reload, uh, getting back in. And I already feel pretty bummed out about this game mode. I mean, I don't really see much use in me com continuing to play it. And of course, the fact that you need to be able to clear the point in, in like um, 15 seconds doesn't really help. So, there should be more of them coming, and I absolutely do not care. At least my AI companions are a bit more helpful this time around. Scratch one. So far, so good. Good. Before they go back. 
All right, we still need to pass Benita through this area. If you want a deal, I can get you the right gear. Shut up! God damn it! Okay, so basically we can get a one of each. So let's just get one of each. So we're gonna get one of those, and of course. Oh, we can't actually put a full grip on this thing. Well, that was poor planning by me. At least we can change the paint. Let's just paint this to something standard issue black. Okay, so this this time we got uh, the area down at at the docks. Again. I mean, what happened to some of the community's more requested features? What happened to giving the AI uh, AI companions different weapons? What happened with uh, a mission generator? I mean, there are so many options for them to go to and to then include a horde mode that's bound to get stale before long is just surprising. And we don't even know if there's going to be more yearly content for Wildlands. So it feels a bit weird that this is what they want to focus their energy on. Of course, if you subscribe to the theory that they're just doing the bare minimum to keep this game alive, then yeah, then it becomes a little bit more... And it might be said that I am just doing a lot of complaining about Ghost Recon Wildlands, and yeah, I am. Because every time I play this game, or, or rather almost every time, there was a time uh, right after release when I was a bit more hopeful. And a bit before release too, for that matter. Uh, when I actually really like this game. But uh, I'll stick by my diamond in the rough opinion. Meaning that this game had all the hallmarks of being a great game. But for some reason, and the jury's still out on why, um, they basically just said, no, we are not going to do this. And there is one of two solutions, uh, or rather not solutions, but, uh, but uh, theories. Over here. Shut up. Now, let's grab a laser sight. Let's have a look. Looks like the cartel is sending more men. I'm sure you'll be fine, but I'm gonna lock up just in case. I'm gonna say this about Ghost Recon Wildlands, and that is, if you can get it on a sale, good. Get it on a sale. Uh, because the single player campaign is worth your time. This, it can be a bit grindy with the weapons and the attachments and everything like that, but uh, the story itself is good enough, is the word I'll have to use. And what you see here is not representative of 
the what I would call the Ghost Recon Wildlands experience. In fact, this would be considered by me more, maybe even a parody. A bit of a parody of that experience because the game is all about finding your own strategy to deal with a tactical situation, usually attacking something and then being forced to just defend. Uh, that's just boring. I mean, I'm, I'm not feeling challenged doing this. I'm feeling this is a chore. I mean, we're we're not even given that backstory as to what what on earth we are doing here. Okay, so now we need to get up there. We don't really need uh, to visit the shed right now. Rather, we are heading up here. Okay, so at least there will be more Roger. All good. All clear. more options for defense here. All right, ten. Unidead soldiers will be raiding the camp. Yawn. Half of the point with Unidad is that you're supposed to avoid them in the main campaign. I'm closing up, Glaze. But you show them who's El Jefe. Everything's gonna be fine. I don't know who wrote the lines for that person, but she already annoys me, basically. This is more what Ghost Recon is about. Ambushing the enemy while they have no idea where you are. I mean, ambushing the enemy like that is far more fun. We have a car in the distance and we have at least two unit at it. Like I said, I could have handled a mode like this if it was like, go to this base and defeat all enemies. It would have been far more interesting, because like I said, and will re probably repeat all over today, Ghost Recon's strength lies in the attack. Also notice how the enemy AI barely, just barely, decides shooting my team, AI teammates is worth their time. Take cover. In Essentials, they took the worst uh, side quest from the game, which is uh, easily the cartel radios, and turned into its own little minigame. And I have to ask, who on earth asked for this? I mean, was there really people who said, you know what this game needs? It needs a horde mode. I'm dead serious. Was there people asking for it? Because I know for a certain that one of the biggest criticisms against the parachute customization was that no one, literally no one, had asked for it. And uh, they were essentially wrong because... Okay, so 25 prestige credits is what we got for that. 25. I can't even begin to tell you how little 
25 prestige credits are. Speaking about that, prestige credits are only oh, useful to buy those horrible gambling packs that already have ruined what amounts to this game's economy. I mean, I didn't mind buying items in the in-game store, because oh, then... Shut the absolute up. Okay, so now we got some more stuff. So we're gonna grab the G46C. The G46C being easily one of the best guns in the game. We're gonna get that one. We're gonna get a compensator. Uh, we are... Yeah, I think we are... Yeah, we're gonna get frag grenades. So compensated buttstock. Ah, digital scope. Digital scope is not good. Compensator. Laser sight. Uh, this is, by the way, one a part of the game that's actually pretty good, and that is the the gun customization. The gun customization options in this game is absolutely great. Uh, but it's a bit annoying when they force the grind for magazines by adding a completely unrealistic 20 round magazine for AR-15s and G-46 weapons. And oh god, please tell me, no. Are we just going to defend all the same spots over and over again? Please tell me that's not what they're gonna do. Please. Let's get up, let's get up in that tower. That is also something that I oh, right now is, is a bit annoyed about. And that is that right... Just go there. Because if this mode is just... Def if this mode is just going to be defend the same spots all over again, then I promise you I will stop playing it after this. I will not even try to keep up the pretense about completing this. I am annoyed as it is with the voice. I am annoyed as it is with it being a horde mode. But if we are expected to just defend the same five sites all over, then... Uh, then I'm officially done with this. Well, the difference between Rainbow Six credits and the uh, Prestige credits is that uh, Ghost Recon doesn't really have the same kind of multiplayer culture where you can show off your skins. I mean, Rainbow Six Siege skins are as much to show off in replays and s stuff like that. And Ghost Recon implemented a loot box system with so-called icons. And the icons can be used in a number of uh, play modes. But the problem, and interestingly enough, the icons can also be Rainbow Six operators, meaning I want them. However, the only way you can get an icon, and I mean literally the only way you can get most icons, uh, is by purchasing a pack where you don't know what you get. Essentially a loot crate. This loot crate is ridiculous, ridiculously expensive. We are talking like uh, 2.5 bucks uh, for one loot crate containing four items. And the drop rate for the icons was just increased to, I think it was increased to 11% up from 5. And to make things worse, these loot crates are filled with stuff like emotes and poses. I'm gonna show you an emote just because of that. And let's see here, tab, switch to social. And now we can facepalm over the loot bags in this game. Yeah. 
And if you buy a loot crate, you are, at least until this patch, most of what you would get was either voice lines or emotes. And the community absolutely hated that, I can tell you that. Uh, okay, so we are still the same, defending the same spots, but in different order. Fuck this. I'm gonna play until I die, but I'm not really going to be that careful about not dying if we're go going to be pretty honest about it. So basically, the economy of Ghost Free Con is broken thanks to the fact that a lot of the items you may want are in loot crates. And yes, I have, and to answer your other questions, I have read pr a lot of Tom Clancy's novels. Uh, I am a big fan of what they call the Ryanverse, meaning the books about uh, Jack Ryan. Uh, but I do want, and this is going to sound a lot like gatekeeping, but I swear it's not. Uh, I don't like the books that were written after Mr. Clancy's death. There is a long line of ghost-written Tom Clancy books that I don't like. Uh, almost every single Clancy book that I like is written by Mr. Clancy himself between, uh, during the 80s and 90s. And like I said, I like his books. I recently completed a read-through of Depth of Honor, uh, Executive Orders, and the Beer and the Dragon. Uh, these are some of his classic novels. Beer and the Dragon not maybe being the best, but hey, it works. And of course, Rainbow Six. I've read Rainbow Six a lot. In fact, Rainbow Six was the first Clancy novel I read, and I read it because I've played the game Rainbow Six. So, yeah, I consider I consider my, myself a pretty solid Clancy fan, really. And we are going to die. So let's see if our team is gonna pick us up. I think Jack Ryan has already become a movie, uh, Shadow Recruit, and then Amazon Prime uh, took the character from Shadow Recruit and basically turned him into... Yeah, we got picked up by our team. Uh, and then uh, there's a Jack Ryan series on Amazon Prime that's pretty good. Uh, but these, this bear, this character has nothing to do with uh, the guy in the books. Jack Ryan in the books is pretty much just a CIA operative. And not really an operative in that sense. He's supposed to belong behind a desk, but uh, in a multitude of situations, fail to stay behind that desk. Uh, I would say that the, my favorite book by Tom Clancy is still... Hunt for Red October. Hunt for Red October is an absolute treat of a book. And that coming from someone who isn't actually that fond of submarine warfare to begin with. So, if you haven't read any of the, the, Clancy, the Clancy's novels, uh, I would say Hunt for Red October is where you should start. So let's go find some more equipment. It looks like we're not getting out of the woods yet regarding this game mode. OJ, you gonna fight them with your sense of humor? Or are you gonna get some guns? Okay, so we, let's see, we can... Not the TARS. Let's get the extended magazine. Uh, we can get the extra sync shot. Now it looks more like a proper gun. Okay, so back down to the water. Well, I, I guess we're locking up. You point us all good, all clear. I'm sure those sicarios won't give cabrones like you any trouble. Move there. I copy. <sighs> I'm already bored with this. For real. Alert. 
keep an eye out on the other side. Oh, they got helicopters. Nice. Let's get the gunners first. Then we'll aim for the pilot. Again, why? Why do I need to do everything I can to stop them? It would be helpful if you could at least try to explain that to me. Okay, we are running lo low on ammunition. We have like three rounds left. Yeah, let's go. But I've talked about a lot that goes... <laughs> At least we made it to the spot. Let's see if our teammates will help us up. Uh, I talked a lot about what Ghost Recon does bad, but I'm gonna talk a bit, bit what Ghost Recon actually does well. Uh, my favorite thing about Ghost Recon is easily the weapons and character customization. I can sit for hours with that. Getting basically the nicest character, nicest gun, the same thing like that. I can... It's an absolute treat of a system. And we are taking some serious fire here. Uh, Ghost Recon's story is, while not the best one, is actually pretty good. And it's engaging enough for you to actually want to finish it. Uh, I would also say that the system where you... Most of the gameplay mechanics regarding actually attacking an outpost instead of just doing this shit is really fun. The one life mode, a ghost mode, is absolutely the best game mode to play. You have one life and when you, uh, when you died in that life, uh, you are, your character is deleted. So it has permadeath. And it is fun as hell. So th these are a couple of things Ghost Recon does well. Obviously, Ghost Mode is not something you should try on your first playthrough. But on your second playthrough or something like that, G Ghost Mode is Sniper, get the fuck down. a real improvement. Especially since Ghost Mode, unlike the main campaign, only allows you to play... only allows you to play with one gun and you can't reload everywhere these are some mechanics they obviously recreated for this game mode okay so the helicopter is down let's see how much more enemies we've got to deal with looks like we only might actually have one more to be fair, Ghost Recon Violence is actually a, also a very pretty game. If you look uh, how the rain interacts with the character and how the ground gets muddy and how the sun gets stuck in the clouds, everything like that is f actually kind of amazing. So, let's see if this person has anything else we might want. Summon of Skrek, yeah, the sum of all fears. Uh, yeah, and the thing is, the sum of all fears is a book you should absolutely only touch if um, if you like political th thrillers, because uh, the sum of all fears is basically only a political thriller, with Jack Ryan behind a desk for almost the entire story. See you on the other side. I like the Sum of All Fears, but it's not really an action novel. Then again, I would say that uh, thick books have actually never scared me. Quite the opposite, in fact. We pulled the hornet's nest. Oh, 
Okay, so they are shooting at me. Would you mind stop doing that? Okay, so now we are in deep trouble. Basically, in the main campaign of Ghost Recon Wildlands, a situation like this would be one of If this happened in the main campaign, you would retreat. You would do everything to just get the hell out of Dodge. And that is why I don't like this game mode. It's basically everything that Ghost Recon is not. And one would think that the developers of this game would understand this. That they would understand what is what's ma what makes their game good. But no, they don't. So, like I said, when I'm dying, I'm most likely just gonna go back to Cities in Motion until Hearts of Iron 4 Mandy Guns is released tomorrow. Or maybe play some Rainbow Six later on tonight. Okay, we need more ammo. Because... <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna repeat myself, but Boss suffice to say, this is just a disappointment. Okay, so... Thank you. Clear. How you guys holding up? Okay, so wave nine of uh Well, there's not really anything else here that is worth our time. We could pick the revive speed and the EMP drone. Okay, so now the Unidad will be coming on to us. Now let's have a look here and see if we can... Yeah, there we go. The EMP drone. Alright, so we get to defend the... No, that's not a new place. That's just the same place all over again. Wrong by me. Fuck. More to the point, this is also the most boring place to defend. <sighs> and they even reuse the same voice. So let's go. Let's see if we actually manage to get some EMP heads there. We are in deep doo doo here. We basically have one life per wave, and we are going through them fast. Do you see that they have an attack helicopter, or are you just stupid? I mean, why on what on earth is it that is worth so defending that can't be used with even more troops down, down. against this kind of uh, firepower? I mean, and I don't even have my single player improvements that make. Where's my frags? I need my frags. Yeah. So, basically, that'll, that'll have to do. Because I'm just getting frustrated. I've been at this for an hour now, so... But thanks for keeping me... Thanks for keeping me company, at least. We got... Uh, we survived for half an hour. 176 kills. 
got to the ninth wave. And if there is some kind of uh, bonus to getting this, uh, I don't really see what would be actually worth playing through this entire game mode. I just don't see what would make it worth it. So, thanks for staying with me, and uh, I might return later on with uh, Rainbow Six, or maybe just another, you know, ghost mode playthrough of the... <laughs> yeah, achievement at round 25, not really worth it. And... So, I might either go for the single player campaign, but I'll wait for the FNFAL first. Uh, because I, I do want to play the main game with the FNFAL. I really like that gun. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to touch the guerrilla mode again. I, I mean, they, they, they have to bribe me pretty badly for me to do that. Because it felt like a literal chore. So, thanks for staying with me. But uh, I need to go and take a walk and get some fresh air. I feel dirty playing this.